Welcome back to Educator.com's SAT prep course. This lesson is the first in our series on commonly tested SAT grammatical errors. Let's get started. All right, we're going to begin with a brief lesson overview. We're going to talk about common errors associated with verbs, with pronouns, with confusing adjectives and adverbs. We're going to talk about parallel structure as it applies to lists. We're going to talk about faulty comparisons. We're going to talk about word pairs. And finally, we're going to talk about a couple places you can go for extra grammar help beyond this course. All right, to begin with, verbs are one of the big trigger errors for the SAT grammar section. There are a lot of verb errors, and they expect you to find a lot of them. The two most common, co common types of verb questions that appear on the SAT grammar section are questions involving subject-verb agreement and issues with verb tense and form. All right. Things you need to know about verbs and subject-verb agreement. Singular subjects take singular verbs. Plural subjects take plural verbs. End of talk, good talk. Now, watch for third-person verb forms. This is where the test will usually try to get you. Third-person singular verbs end in S, usually, with some exceptions for irregular verbs, and third-person pl plurals generally do not. Now, Something else to watch out for, the verb will probably be separated from the subject by a phrase, just to make things harder for you. It may also be reversed, have the verb come before the subject for some reason, or it may be controlled by a compound subject. None of these absolve you of your responsibility to make sure that subjects and verbs agree. So, let's start with a simple version. The dog barks. Dog is singular, so it ends in the singular form, which ends in S. Dog barks. But if dogs is plural, then it becomes bark, and the S goes away. Now, the subject may be separated from the verb by a phrase. The dog, still the subject, awaken from sleep, there's that phrase, barks, still our verb, still the singular form. The dogs, plural, with big teeth, oh, prepositional phrase, you can always cross those out, bark. Once again, subject is dogs, verb is bark. Let's do this in a little more, slightly more complicated form. In the backyard barks a great big dog. For some reason, whenever we start with a prepositional phrase, well, not always when we start with a prepositional phrase, but Often, when we start with a prepositional phrase, the verb will end up coming before the subject. English speakers just like this. It makes them feel like Shakespeare. I don't know why. So in the backyard is our prepositional phrase, which we can ignore. Barks is our verb, and it has to agree with the subject dog. And finally, a compound subject is where you have uh, two or more entities performing the verb. That makes a plural subject. So in this case, the dog and the fox bark, plural verb, at each other. All right, things you need to know about trying to determine whether your subject is singular or plural. If it is a collective noun, which is a uh, noun describing a group, so team or choir or group or gang, those are all singular. A number of anything is treated like a plural subject. The number of anything is treated like a singular subject. So watch for those articles, a and the. Each is singular because it means each one of something. Every one, or every one, the uh, one word, is always singular, and gerunds as subjects are singular. Now, what is a gerund? A gerund is a verb ending in ing that is acting like a noun, usually describing uh, an activity of some kind. Let's look at some examples. A flock of geese flies overhead. Now, of geese is a prepositional phrase. Flock is a collective noun. It describes a group. So even though there are many geese, there's only one flock, one group, so the subject is singular, so it gets the singular verb flies. A number of cats are orange. Well, a number of anything is always uh, a number of anything is always treated as plural, so number are plural verb. The number of books on the shelf is 12. Well, the number is always treated as singular, the one and only number. So, it gets the singular verb is. Each man does what he can. Each or even even you could take out man and just be each does what he can gets the singular verb does. Everyone tries his best. Everyone, again, is always singular, so everyone tries his best. And cooking, even though it's a verb, it's a gerund, so it's acting like a noun, and it's acting like a singular noun because it's describing the abstract concept, the activity of cooking. Cooking, singular, is singular, my favorite hobby. <laughs> 